everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're going to be playing Sentinels of the Multiverse, the definitive edition. Uh, I just got my copy of this one. I pledged this myself, no review copy. I've loved Sentinels for a long time, but I sold my entire collection to buy into this new edition, hoping it would be better, and uh, we'll see if it is. I'm going to do a full solo playthrough, and then I'll talk about my thoughts on the new edition at the end of the video. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can't see these anywhere else. You can also check out our separate streaming channel with even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. All right, I expect this challenge to be a tough one. I'm playing against a tough boss with an extra scenario on top. Let's see how it goes. See, I mentioned the scenario. Something new to this new edition, the definitive edition, are events. You've got regular events. I've defeated two of them here. And then you've got critical events. Regular events, they have one for each of these six bosses that come in the game. They basically just add an extra rule. Like in this one I just played yesterday, Akash Buta interacts with the environment differently and deals extra damage because of it. And if you defeat them, you get to use this card in future events. You can discard it to get one of two bonuses at any point during a hero's turn. But then we've got critical events, and note this collection limit. That tells you how many of these regular event bonuses you can bring in, so I'm using both of these ones. But instead of just taking the regular villain, just adding one special rule on top, it's an entirely alternate version of one of these six main villains. Sometimes it's an entirely different character altogether, but with Citizen Dawn, it's just a different set of powers for her. She's definitely tougher than the regular Citizen Dawn. I don't know if these two cards will be enough to help me win, because Citizen Dawn is already one of the toughest in the base game. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And in terms of my team, I've got the Wraith, who's basically Sentinel's version of Batman. I've got the Indestructible Bunker, kind of like Iron Man. And I've got Absolute Zero, who's, I don't know, sort of like a uh, good guy, Mr. Freeze. And then for our environment, because if you don't know Sentinels of the Multiverse, it's a fully cooperative uh, modular game where you mix decks together. We're going to be in the city of Megalopolis, which is not one of the hardest environments, but it's the one that was referenced in the critical event. You can use any environment, but I wanted to kind of keep it thematically correct. And I'll explain the mechanics of the game as we go through the first turns. Let's get right to it. So each round begins with a villain turn. First, you resolve any start phase effects in the order in which they came into play. So I'll start with Citizen Dawn's basic start phase effect here, and then the one on her channel, the Eclipse. By the way, this version of Citizen the Dawn, she's basically merged with the Eclipse to become ultra powerful. She has 100 life. Uh, I didn't say this, but you have to take away all of her life to win. So she starts with one of her most powerful ongoing cards, Channel the Eclipse, and she also starts with H-2 Citizen cards. Basically, Citizen Dawn's whole deal is having a whole bunch of ultra-powered minions in her deck. Uh, I think it's very much patterned after uh, Magneto and when he kind of like had his own society of mutants. And to explain what the H-2 thing means, H means the number of heroes. This is one of the way they uh, try to balance for player count. In this case, I have three heroes, so I started with one Citizen in play. So again, I'm going to resolve start phase effects in the order they came out. Then I'm going to play one card from her unique deck, and then I'm going to resolve end phase effects. We have a lot of them in the order they came out. But first, very important, her text says villain ongoing cards are indestructible. So I have a ton of cards like right now in my hand that can get rid of this ridiculously powerful card, but because it's indestructible, I can't do that. Instead, it says after a citizen card is destroyed, bury one villain ongoing card, which means it goes to the bottom of her deck. So in this version of Citizen Dawn, I have to defeat these people to get her ongoing cards to go away. All right, so first start phase says, if there are no villain ongoing cards in play, discover one ongoing card. That means I'd flip through her deck until I found the first ongoing card and it would go straight into play, then I'd shuffle the deck. Not happening here because she has one in play. Then Channel the Eclipse says, start phase, play the top card of the villain deck. Wow, just a double play here. And yuck, this is a nasty one. Citizen Truth. Citizen Truth's allies are immune to damage. By the way, this is his amount of life. He is going to be like a minion. It's called a target that goes into play. Anybody with a life value does that. So I can't hurt any of his allies, like including Citizen Hammer, who does a ton of damage to us. He takes minus one damage from all attacks, and all the citizens tend to combo with each other, uh, in this case, Truth or Dare. After Citizen Dare is played, each citizen card regains two hit points, then bury this card. So you can either have Truth or Dare. Haha, <laughs> Sentinels, great humor there. <laughs> so that's the start phase. Now I play her regular card, not the bonus from Channel of the Eclipse. And it is Healing Light. Citizen Dawn regains 10 hit points. Restore all other citizen cards at their maximum hit points. Well, thank God it's nothing bad because that does nothing. Everyone's at full hit points anyway. And then we do all the end phase effects in the order they came out. Let's read Citizen Dawn since it's going to happen every turn. Okay, Citizen Dawn deals the hero target with the highest hit point, X radiant damage. Usually the type doesn't matter except in very rare cases, where X is the number of citizen cards in place. So that'll be two. Then discover one citizen card. Oh my gosh, she's going to play another one. If no citizen cards are played this way, shuffle the trash into the deck. So first she's doing two damage to the person with the highest health. 
And currently that is Bunker. So he's going down to 28. They did come with these spinners, which are excellent for all the heroes and the villain. Then she's going to play another citizen. And in this case, it's citizen tears during the end phase, which will happen because uh, she's going to be later in the end phase. Each hero discards one card. Yuck. And then if blood and sweat, blood, sweat, and tears were in play, other effects would happen. Again, lots of comboing for this deck. Okay, then Channel of the Eclipse. Citizen Dawn deals each non-villain target two energy damage. That means all of the heroes and like anybody that was from the environment would get hurt too, but none of the citizens. And then <laughs> Citizen Hammer deals each hero target three fire damage. So that's a uh, five, and then we each have to discard one card. So yeah, uh, <laughs> like I said, this is a tough one. I might die very quickly, but hopefully you'll still get to see how the game works. So Wraith is down to 20. That was uh, one fifth of her life in two seconds. Bunker's down to 23. An absolute zero who likes to hurt himself to do anything, so this is great, uh, is down to 24. Then we each have to discard a card. There's a lot of stuff to look at here, but basically the Wraith's got a defense card, a card that gives her more card draw, and one that can help her uh, deal and predict with what the villain's gonna do. The big one that's not too useful in this current scenario is Grappling Hook. It destroys an ongoing card, which is usually amazing, but because Citizen Dawn's ongoing cards can't be destroyed anyway, we'll get rid of that. Meanwhile, Bunker's got a command card that orders somebody else to attack an attack card, a defense card, and a card that lets him play a bunch more cards. So I'm gonna ditch the uh, command one. And then Absolute Zero's got a defense card. We got a lot of those. Destroy ongoing cards. Yeah, that one's going away, <laughs> like the uh, reason I already said. And then one that gives him consistent card draw or power use, and one that increases his cold damage. Those ones are great, but I don't actually have a way to deal damage yet, so not so great at this stage. And that's it for Citizen Dawn's turn. I say it, but that was probably the worst possible turn we could have had for her. <laughs> All right, so now we get to the Wraith's turn, and just like the villain, first I will resolve any start of phase effects, which I don't have any in play yet. This is my hand, by the way, not the cards in play. Then I can play one card, then I can use one power, and each of the main big hero cards shows their life and also one power they can use. This, by the way, is the alternate hero card for the Wraith. In this set, you have one of these for each hero, so kind of an alternate way to play. Basically, has a different life total sometimes and a different power. And I really don't like Wraith's base power, so we're going to try this one. So yeah, you can use one power either from the main character card or from a card you've played, and then you draw one card and resolve any end phase abilities. So I think in this case, because Wraith has the least health and we're getting hit with a ton of damage, best thing she can play is Combat Prowess. It's an ongoing card, which means it stays in play. Limited means you can only have one copy in play. And Reaction is a new keyword. It means when you would take damage, you can use this, but only once per turn. So I couldn't use this against each of the attacks by the villains, for example. It says minus two to the damage that the Wraith would be dealt, and then if I take no damage, I can play one card for free, which is amazing. And I'm going to keep all the in-play cards above the character and deck to kind of keep things organized. Next thing you to use a power, let's look at Wraith's base one, Haunt the Shadows. Reveal and replace the top card of the villain deck, so I get to see what's coming. If it's a target, that means something with health, I get to discover one item card. It means I flip until I get an item card and play it for free, which is awesome, otherwise I draw a card. And let's see, it is indeed, oh gosh, it's Sweat, which is going to combo with Tears, yay. But at least Wraith gets to play an item for free. I'm going to flip through her deck until I find one and then reshuffle the deck. And in this case, it's the same, not very useful infrared eyepiece I already had to play. But, uh, say, uh, okay. All right, and then to end her turn, she'll draw a card. In this case, another item, Throwing Knives, lets her deal damage to a bunch of enemies. That would be great to get out to uh, fight all these citizens. We move on to Bunker. Bunker basically plays a bunch of weapons and then he adds ordnance cards underneath them as ammo and he can shoot them often for devastating effect but only until he runs out of ammo. So in this case he's got a gun that can shoot, he's got a shield that can defend him, and he's got upgrade mode that prevents him from using powers but he can play a bunch of cards. So I think that's the uh, the obvious one to go with. So this is after this card is played, summon one item card. That means I get to go through my entire deck and pick the exact card and play it immediately, which is amazing. But I cannot use power while this is in play. At the end of my turn, I'm going to play up to two cards for free. So I'll get like all of these out plus the item I discover. But then at the start phase, I'll destroy this card and I'll be able to use powers again. So basically, I'm just playing a ton of cards this turn. The card I'm going to pick for free is the Grenade Launcher. Like pretty much all of his weapons at the start of each turn, I'm going to get a free card underneath of this to be ammo. And then as my power for the turn, I can destroy up to two cards. And each time I destroy a card, I get to do two fire damage to three different targets. Heck yes. Now, unfortunately, I can't use power, so I skip that entire step, but I do get to play two more cards, which means both of these are coming in. Uh, this one also lets me put a card under this at the start of every turn, which I've already missed. But uh, then at the end phase for free, I can destroy up to three cards under this to deal some free damage. So this one doesn't require my power, which means it'll combo nicely with the grenade launcher. And then I've got emergency shielding. When this card is destroyed, I heal two as a reaction, same as the race, minus two to damage the bunker would be dealt. And then if bunker is still dealt damage, destroy this. So uh, I can stop at exactly two damage attack with no negative consequences, but if it's uh, used to stop three or more, I'll heal myself, but it'll go away. 
So boom, that's a lot of upgrading. This will go away in a second and these will start loading up. Bunker does still get a card. Oh, and it's turret mode, which is unlike upgrade mode, basically super attack mode, which I might use next turn just because I want to uh, survive. We'll see. And finally, absolute zeroed. High yield cooldown tanks is by far the best card he could play right now. It lets him use an extra power every turn, which won't matter because he only has one power. Or he can draw a free card every turn. And right now he drew kind of dead a bit, so <laughs> he needs that. But I'm going to do something different, and I'll show you why in a second, because I only see myself having sort of one minor chance here to not die horribly. I'm going to play Ice Shield. It says, after this card is played, select one target. That target is immune to damage. I'm actually not even going to do that because I'm going to blow this up in a second. You'll see why. And then when this card is destroyed, you may draw one card and play one card. And it would destroy itself anyway at the start of my turn. But let's show you why I'm playing this to destroy it. So we're right now in a terrible position where she's got this incredibly powerful ongoing card and a ton of awesome citizens, and I can't even hurt any of them because of Citizen Truth. But one of the two effects on one of the events I brought into the game says, destroy any number of hero ongoing and or item cards. Then one villain target deals itself two lightning damage, plus two for each card destroyed this way. Now, currently, the only villain target that can take damage is Citizen Truth. He's blocking for everybody else, and he takes minus one damage. So I need an eight damage attack to kill him outright. That card said two damage plus one for each card I trash. So I would need to get rid of three item and ongoing cards to kill this guy straight up. I'm going to try to do it with the cards that I think are least useful. This infrared eyepiece is pretty nice, but I already have another copy in my hand, so that's one. This upgrade mode is going away anyway, and I already got the benefit from it, so that's two. And like I said, the Ice Shield is going to go away. I'm not going to use its uh, blocking abilities. That's three. So that is eight to damage, minus one, seven to Citizen Truth. I defeat him. He gets discarded. And after any Citizen card is destroyed, I get to bury one villain ongoing card. So she'll play another one for free, but I put her nastiest ongoing card on the bottom of her deck and took away at least one of the guys. Uh, <laughs> we're still in a bad way, but uh, he, she's not getting a free extra villain card draw. So we have a chance to survive, maybe. Now, by the way, this said, when Ice Shield is destroyed, I get to draw a card and then play a card for Absolute Zero. Cold Snap. Absolute Zero deals himself three fire damage, and then he deals each non-hero target one cold damage. Uh, later on, he'll get a card that, well, well if I survive that long, <laughs> he'll get a card that converts fire damage he deals to himself to extra damage against other people, and he'll get a card that lets cold damage heal him, because his whole thing is that he, like, damages himself to do other effects. Yeah, I think I want to save that until I get the Fire Converter card. So for my free play, I'm going to play High Yield Coolant Tanks. At the end of my turn, I can either use a power for free, uh, but you can only use each power once per turn, so I couldn't double use this one, or you can draw a card. And then next my turn, I get to use a power, but I'm not going to, because look, Absolute Zero deals himself either one cold damage or one fire damage. Again, later on, the cold will heal him and the fire will hurt others, but right now he's just going to skip his power because there's no reason to hurt himself for no bonus whatsoever. So we go right into the draw phase, and then the end phase, he's going to draw one card plus one more, because clearly I don't want to use a power with that one. And here we go, Coolant Blast. That's a power that actually deals some damage. Although it's equal to the amount of fire damage he dealt to himself this turn, so that won't work for a while. And then Hoar Fire, or Boar Fire, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Uh, he deals one target two cold damage, then he does a different target two fire damage, then he hurts himself. So yeah, you can see kind of a theme here, which is nasty when I'm in such a dangerous place. I need to get his two converter cards. Uh, we'll see where they are. And finally, we get to the environment turn, and that'll finish out our first painful round, although I am glad that I managed to kill that one guy. First, we would resolve any start effects. There aren't any. Then we play the top card. Then we resolve any end effects. What have we got? Bustling City. In turn order, reveal the top card of each deck. If the revealed card is a one-shot card, discard it. Otherwise, play it. Well, that means, uh, great, Citizen Dog's going to get even more people out. But uh, we'll go in order. So Ray saw her on top. Citizen Sweat. She's going to destroy my ongoing cards. And then uh, she's going to combo with Tears. And Tears is going to combo with her to do nastiness. All right, how about Wraith? She got a one-shot, so it's just discarded. and wasn't very good anyway. Hope it doesn't happen for all my heroes. Nope. Oh, God, we're playing upgrade mode. Um, after this card is played, summon one item card. Okay, so he's going to get a free item card again, but then it will destroy itself at the start of his turn. So he will still be able to use powers. That's good, at least. And I'm going to go ahead and put his uh, strongest weapon in play. It's only one copy of this in the deck, so might as well play it when I can get it for free. This is the Omni Cannon. Once again, it gets one card for free at the start of each of his turns, and I can destroy all the cards under to deal double the damage to one target uh, equal to the number of cards. Double the number of cards, I should say. So, yeah. Okay, finally, absolute zero. Oh, actually, get something good. What is this? After this card is played, you may play one card. That's nice. Oh, yes, after Absolute Zero is dealt fire damage, Absolute Zero deals one target that much cold damage. Woo! So I got the one I wanted. And ooh, ooh, I can actually take out some of her citizens now before they hurt the heck out of me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use Cold Snap. I'm going to deal myself three fire damage, which means I'll deal somebody else three cold damage in a second, and then I'll deal each non-hero target one cold damage. So that'll be four damage total to one person, and then one each of the others. 
And of course, he's going down to 21, dying. And who am I going to pick for the three damage? Clearly, Citizen Hammer, because <laughs> he's literally about to uh, hit me for three more damage against each of us. So definitely needs to be the one to take out. And then one damage to every non-hero target. Uh, she doesn't have any, like, blocking damage anymore. Nope. So she's at 99. And then each of them takes one, but Citizen Hammer's at his four, so he is defeated. But no ongoing cards for me to get rid of this time, so she's going to play one for free at the start of her turn. Oh, hey, that actually worked out pretty dang well. Now, I will note, if I had gotten my focus apertures out, I would have done four damage with that initial attack and two to everyone afterwards, so need to play that as soon as I can. And then we can't forget, we do flip the top card of Megalopolis. It's not a one-shot. Oh, it's uh, someone who's good for me. Local legal expert. She has six lives. So people might target her sometimes. This card counts as a hero target. It is immune to damage dealt by hero targets. At the end phase, each hero draws one card. Yeah, legal expert, show me how to win the law. So Wraith gets Impromptu Invention is a great one. She gets to draw one card. She gets to play the first item card on top of her deck, and then she can play a card for free. That's definitely my card play next turn. Bunker is going to get Recharge Mode. God, he's getting all his modes. It lets him draw a ton of cards, which uh, might be worth doing here since he doesn't really have much of anything. Finally, Absolute Zero gets us, ooh, something to play an item card. He's going to get his one that lets him make cold damage healing. Yay! Yes, yeah, so going into round two, I feel like I might actually be able to win. That was a <laughs> way better, amazing series of events, just like the amazing bad luck I had at the beginning. Although this combo of sweat and tears is still going to be pretty nasty. So we go into Citizen Dawn. The only start phase one is that because there are no ongoing cards in play, she's going to play the first one on top of her deck. And then she will shuffle, which means the one that we buried is going to be somewhere in the middle of her deck again. Oh, Luminous Leadership. Plus one damage dealt by Citizen cards. That's not good. Although we did get rid of almost all the ones who hurt us of consistently. <laughs> and then start phase. If Citizen Dawn is the only citizen in play, uh, discover one citizen card. This is a citizen. Uh, let's go, Mike. Get your S's under control. So yeah, so that one won't apply in the start phase because she clearly has a bunch of citizens. So now we go to the play phase. She plays Citizen Dare. Oh, we just got rid of Truth, right? Plus one damage dealt to hero targets by anything. By anything. What? After Citizen Truth is played, this card deals each hero target one irreducible psychic damage and then bury this. Oh, no, after Citizen Truth. That's right, because they uh, cancel each other out. So he's just boosting. So wow, we are at uh, plus one, two damage from the Citizen cards against us and then uh, plus one from anything else against us. Not good, not good. Let's go to end phase. She's dealing X damage, where it's one, two, three citizens, and she's going to discover another citizen. Oh, I hate her. So that's going to be five damage with her bonus against the highest hit point person, which is Bunker. And uh, should he use his shielding? No, not yet, because I don't want to just have to throw it away. And she discovers another citizen. Citizen blood? No, I really have all three of them. Oh god, I don't even know what that does. We'll get to that terribleness in a second. <laughs> so, Citizen Tears. We each have to discard a card. And then Citizen Blood deals the hero target with the highest hit points, two. It's going to be four infernal damage. And then Sweat deals the hero target with the lowest hit points, four damage. <sighs> Alright, so, discard a card. Still not loving this uh, eyepiece. Because she plays and goes through too many cards anyway. Um, for Bunker, I think he's going to need turret mode to kill some of these people. I don't think he has time to recharge yet. And then for absolute zero, um, I mean, eh. Yeah, cool and blast is kind of hard to get to go off in a meaningful way, so we'll get rid of that. And then she said the person with the highest is two, plus two, four, infernal damage. He's down to 17. And then the lowest hero target is taking four. Remember, she counts as a hero target, so she only has two life left. I don't think she'll be around very long to help us out. All right, then Citizen Sweat. Destroy one hero ongoing card. Okay. And then a Citizen Blood is in play. Destroy another hero ongoing card, so that's two. And then Tears deals each hero target one. It's going to be three melee damage. Oh my gosh, we're going to die. <laughs> I was so happy a second ago. All right, so let's see. Oh, good. We can destroy one ongoing card, the upgrade card. Glad to have that go away. And the only other one we have, sadly, is Combat Prowess. Darn it. And it's three melee damage each, and she would have prevented two of it in a second. 17 for Wraith. Oh, and yeah, our, and yeah, our legal expert is legally dead. Bunker's at 15. And Absolute Zero is at 14. Yay. And we aren't done. Oh no, we aren't done. This card deals the hero target with the lowest hit points. One infernal damage, that'll be three. And then, okay, if Citizen Sweat is in play, it heals. We don't care about that. And if Citizen Tears is in play, one hero discards one card. Okay, so that's not too, too bad. That's probably the least bad of all of them. So three damage to the lowest hit point, and then one of us discards a card. Lowest hit point is absolute zero, which remember hurts himself. Oh man. And then discard one card, I think leverage. Oh my gosh. But we survived another turn. That's, that's an accomplishment <laughs> in this scenario. All right, so Wraith's turn. Uh, no start phase. We're going to play Impromptu Invention. We can draw one card. Then we draw the first item card and play it for free. Then we can play a card. So we draw a Sonic Neutralizer. And we play our Utility Belt. 
uh, power. Either draw two cards or play one item card. Oh, and I can use one additional power this phase. Nice. Okay, then I can still play a card. Let's get my throwing knives out there. I need to hurt these people. Okay, now because of the utility belt, I can use two powers. So the throwing knives will deal damage. I'll definitely use that. But first, I think I'll use my Haunt the Shadows and see if I can get a free item card. Citizen Dodd's top card is Citizen Autumn. Yay, not a comboable one. So I do get to discover the first item card in my deck, which is another utility belt. When you would get a limited card played, it just goes to your hand. So this is kind of useless unless I lose the first one. But for my second power, I'll deal up to three targets, one projectile damage each. Gosh, they're all terrible, but the guy who's boosting all of their damage plus the two worst of the Blood, Sweat, and Tears, I think is what I need to go with. All right, nice start, Wraith, and another Sonic Neutralizer, which makes environment cards not do anything bad. It's really not what I need right now. All right, Bunker. Uh, ooh, that's right, I need to do all my start phase stuff. So like I said, all of his weapons, they each get a free card underneath. Doesn't matter what that card is, it is just ordnance, just ammo to shoot with. Then I'm gonna play Turret Mode. I'll have plus one damage dealt by Bunker from all effects, and I can use two additional powers. So I can use three powers this turn. So we'll go ahead and play that. How many powers do I even have? One, two, okay, so the Bunker's third one will be three. I can draw one card or put the top card of my deck under one ordnance card in play. And Grenade Launcher is gonna be crazy for hitting a lot of these citizens. So we're definitely doing that one. Now I can use two more powers. So let's use the Grenade Launcher. It says, destroy up to two cards under this card. Each time you destroy one card this way, Bunker deals three targets, two fire damage each, which is going to be three fire damage thanks to the turret. So I can do three fire damage each to three targets. And then again, if I destroy both of these, so that means tears, you're dead. Boom, which does get rid of the one ongoing card. Sweat, you're dead. And dare, well actually, hmm. I can probably kill both these people, I think. So I'll do the three on Citizen Blood to get the full damage. Oh, and gosh, I forgot to get to do it again. So yeah, we'll kill Blood, we'll kill Dare, and we'll deal three damage to Citizen herself. And she doesn't flip or anything. If I do this hundred, she is dead. All right, I still have one more power. Do I want to use my Omni Cannon? I would do two damage by discarding one card, but then it would be plus one because the turn mode, so it'd be three, but I might want to save it for like next turn where more Citizens come out and try to make it four damage. And then at the end of the phase, my Gatling gun, I can destroy up to three cards. Each time I destroy a card, it'll deal one target, one damage. So again, I could deal like five damage to Citizen Dawn, but I'm taking away my chance to take care of some nasty citizens that come out next turn. Hmm, that's a tough choice. I think I'm going to keep building up the Omni Cannon, but I will uh, do two damage with the Gatling gun. The Dawn's down to 94. All right, Bunker, you are a beast, sir. Nicely done. And again, that turret mode will go away in a moment. He gets to draw a card, he doesn't have very many. Tactical Command, one ally uses one power, damage dealt by that ally with that power is irreducible. Uh, and I guess right now I could like have uh, Wraith use your throwing knives again, that's the best I could do. Okay, and finally, Absolute Zero. Um, I'm gonna do the Conducive Installation, or Conductive. <laughs> draw one card, collect an item card, that means I get to select one from my deck. So if I don't draw that cold converting one, I'm gonna get it, and then I can play one card. First we draw one is Modular Repair, lets me play some stuff and deal some damage. And then, like I said, I'm going to collect this one and then play it. Null point calibration unit. Oh, I get to play a free card after this. I like that they added that. Whenever Absolute Zero will be dealt cold damage, he regains that much hit points instead, which is what's going to hopefully keep him alive when he's at 11 life. So I'll play that, get to play another one. Let's see, I want to save a uh, horror fire until like more enemies are out. So I'm going to play my focused apertures. And then for his power, I can deal him one fire damage or one cold damage. I'll deal cold with the plus one. It's two cold damage and then it becomes healing. So basically... He uses action to heal himself too, so he's not quite so dead. And then I can use another power, which I don't have any of, or I can draw a card, plus I draw the regular card I draw. Uh, soon I need to get another power out to use that. Oh, gosh, another one that I can't use? I'm desperate deployment. Summon one item card. Oh, okay, and then I hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> Although at this point, the hurting is going to be more hurting them and healing myself a bit. And all right, environment, you going to be helpful again? Probably not. Oh, gosh, it's this one again? All right, let's see what we reveal. Come on, Citizen Dawn, just reveal a like, one shot and discard it. Oh, no, that's right. I knew what it was. It's Citizen Autumn, of course. You know, destroy environment cards. I don't really care about that. Oh, God, destroy all ongoing cards controlled by the hero with the lowest hit points? Darn it. Although, gosh, if I can get that to be Bunker, he only has items, not ongoing cards, or the modes are ongoing, so that won't be too bad. Uh, smoke Bombs. Cool, I get to play this because it's not a one-shot. Minus one damage dealt to hero targets. That's amazing. Plus one damage dealt by the Wraith. Oh, but it goes away during the start phase, so that's not as cool as I thought. And actually, I don't know if they're even attacking me this next turn, so not necessarily that important. Ah, Piston Punch gets discarded. It's a one-shot. And Absolute Zero gets a new Ice Shield. Okay, so I get to select one target's immune to damage. So Absolute Zero has the least damage. Right now, the only card Citizen Dawn has in play is going to deal damage to the person with the most health. So I think I'm actually going to put this on the Wraith for this turn. And we're not done the environment. Oh, Burning High Rise. 
Okay, this card uh, deals each hero target two fire damage, and then each hero character deals itself two fixed psychic damage, then I destroy this card. That's the start phase, so it goes all the way around in the next environment turn. If I haven't dealt with it, that'll happen. Or at the end of this turn, the heroes can choose to deal with the emergency. That's how a lot of the cards in Megalopolis works. Each hero may discard any number of cards. If H plus two, that's five cards are discarded this way, destroy this card. That's not going to happen. But luckily, Citizen Autumn will just destroy it for me. She will <laughs> blow up that entire building, and I won't have to worry about it. So speaking of, we're going into Citizen Dawn's turn. She's going to discover the first ongoing card. Oh, God, which is Channel the Eclipse again. Oh, well. Okay, continuing with start phases, Autumn's going to blow up that uh, high rise. And then we play another card from the Eclipse. Oh, gosh, no! Oh, my gosh. This is my least favorite card from the original edition. I had hoped they would change it, but they did not. I've destroyed every ongoing card, every item card, every environment card, and okay, she hurts herself for five. That's the consolation prize. But yeah, just to explain what has happened, literally, wow, everything. <laughs> All of our buildup is gone. Let's see, when, do I have anything that's like when it gets destroyed? That's right, emergency shields, when it gets destroyed, bunker heals too. Literally the only positive thing to come out of this, pretty much. Oh, man, all this stuff. Actually, wait, uh, what was it? Yeah, Ice Shield. When it gets destroyed, I get to draw a card and then play a card. Oh, and Modular Repair. This is actually uh, good. Yeah, so that's the card I'll play, I think. I can salvage an item card and then play a card and then deal myself one fire damage and one cold damage. Okay, so um, we're going to salvage a card first, which will be one of my two converters. Then I can play a card, so I'll play this, and I can immediately play another card. So we're waiting on that damage. The things all go in order. So I'm going to play Modular Repair. And I'm going to salvage a card, which will be this one. I can play a card. I'm going to play that, which means now I can play another card, but I'm about to deal myself one fire and one cold damage. And that's what I'm going to do is desperate deployment. I'm going to summon one item card, and then I get them dealing myself one fire and one cold damage. Well, <laughs> at least Absolute Zero comes back quickly. So I'm going to summon another Focus Apertures for plus one cold damage. And then we go, and we're going to deal two cold damage and one fire damage, two cold damage and one fire damage, two cold damage and one fire damage. So that's six cold damage that I heal with. He's up to 19. Three fire damage, he does not, but for each of those instances of fire damage, he's going to deal one cold damage to somebody else, increase the two, so I'm dealing out six damage. Yeah, Absolute Zero, what an absolute beast. Everyone else is like totally crying because they lost all their cards. Absolute Zero just laughs it off. And oh my gosh, ha 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 Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna kill Citizen Autumn, which will also destroy or bury this immediately. That's right, I should be burying them and not uh, destroying them. So in many ways, that devastating Aurora was by far the worst thing that could have happened, but uh, it didn't totally suck. Oh my gosh, all of that was the start phase. So she still has to play a regular card. It's going to be, oh, Luminous Leadership again. Plus one damage dealt by Citizen cards. And then good, she doesn't get to play a free Citizen right now, uh, even though that would let her otherwise. And then she's going to deal, uh, oh gosh, she's a Citizen herself. I should have dealt one more damage for every time she attacked. Uh, I don't remember who it was, so we'll just kind of let that go, <laughs> but I'm sure I'll have a note about it earlier. Uh, but yeah, she's going to so just deal one damage to the person with the highest health, and then she's going to discover one citizen card, which is Citizen Anvil. Minus one damage dealt to citizen cards. Oh god, no! I hate this. He brings Citizen Hammer into play, which means this guy's going to deal three, no, count again, four damage to each of us because of the boost from Luminous Leadership, and then Anvil's going to make it tough for me to kill him. What a jerk. Yeah, race down to 13. Bunker is also down to 13. Absolute zero is down to 12. Oh my gosh. All right, well, <laughs> things just keep on getting rougher. Um, I guess race going to play her utility belt. Nothing else much she can play. She'll draw two cards. Actually, she can use two actions, can't she? So first, she'll draw two cards. Gets Razor Ordnance. That's good damage and impromptu invention. Always good. And then she can look at the top villain card. And it is, again, a person. So she gets to play the first item card that comes up. Which is a stun ball. This is a nice one. Uh, the Wraith deals one target, one lightning damage. And then until my next turn, minus one damage dealt by that target. I uh, wish I had another power to use. Maybe I should have done those out of order. Because then I could have hit Citizen Hammer with that. But too late. And she gets to draw another card. Oh, but actually, I guess this will work out. Because here we go. Tactical Command. One ally uses one power. Damage dealt by that ally with that power is irreducible. So she'll deal Citizen Hammer. One damage with her stun bolt. Uh, Anvil would have reduced that. But can't because of the bonus that Bunker gave her. And then he's dealing minus one damage, uh, which, I mean, hopefully he'll be dead, but it's still good if he's not. Gosh, that's all Bunker has. So he's going to use his power to draw a card, and then he draws another one. Okay, there's a weapon. There's something that boosts weapons. That's something, at least. And then Absolute Zero, are you an Absolute Hero? Let's play this one. Absolute Zero deals one target, two cold damage. That'll be boosted to three. Deals a different target, two fire damage. And then deals himself one cold damage and one fire damage, which we know will be uh, shot off and such. Now, here's the thing. If we don't kill Anvil, he's just going to summon Hammer again anyway. So I guess he'll hit Anvil with all the stuff. So first, we've got the three cold damage. It gets reduced to two. 
And we got the two fire damage to a different target that we will go on hammer, goes down to one. And he deals himself one fire damage, gets increased to two cold damage. He'll deal one to Anvil after the armor. I took him down to 11, but then he heals himself two with the cold damage he dealt himself. Now for his power, he can either heal himself two or take one damage to deal two to somebody else. I mean, Anvil's not going to die this turn anyway, so he's going to heal himself too and try to tank for the group a little bit. And then he draws something. Desperate Deployment. Summon one item card, and he hurts himself. I'm good with that. All right, now to the environment. Impending Casualty. Okay, if we don't uh, save this person, each hero character deals itself three fixed psychic damage. One hero may discard their hand. If they do, they draw two cards and destroy this card. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll do that. That'll be Bunker. He's only got two cards in his hand, and yes, I do want that mounted AP gun, but got to do what you got to do. A recharge mode. Ooh, that's one that lets me draw a bunch of cards and a punch. That's cool. I'm cool with all of that. So Bunker saved this person. We don't have to suffer any damage next turn from it. And okay, um, <laughs> back to Citizen Dawn. Oh, good. Okay, there are villain ongoing cards in place. Even though it's a nasty villain ongoing card, we don't have to do anything with that. Oh, we don't have to do anything with this because uh, she does have citizens in play. So that's the small silver lining. <laughs> now we'll play a regular card. It's a Citizen Summer. Uh, at the start of each turn, each of them deals the hero target with the highest hit points, one fire damage, if she's still alive. And then end phase, this card deals the two heroes with the most cards in play. Okay, well, we'll get to all that damage in a second, because there is a lot of it since we can get rid of this. Uh, she's dealing hero target with the highest hit points, one, two, three, four, five damage. That's five to absolute zero. He's down to 10. Now it is radiant damage, sadly. If it was cold or fire, that'd be awesome. Oh, wait, that's right. Citizen Hammer deals fire damage. Did I, did I have those cards in play last turn? Yeah, I think I did, but it's okay. <laughs> I forgot to give them a boost of damage, so now me forgetting to do it for me is fine. And she discovers the first citizen. That's not a citizen. Usually I got one right away. There we go. So, oh no, not winter. You combo with summer. I don't like this. All right, and then uh, Citizen Hammer's already in place. So he does nothing. Dealing each hero target three minus one is two, plus one is three fire damage. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I'm like 90% sure that if you choose the order, which you do, you can kill the person who's attacking and then it stops the rest of the damage. The reason I say that is if Absolute Zero suffers three fire damage, he hits back with four cold damage. So let's see, you could either kill Citizen Hammer or kill Citizen Summer or kill Citizen Winner. Either way, he's going to get rid of the Luminous Leadership. So which one does he want to do? She's going to hit him and uh, Wraith with more fire damage, which would let him kill somebody else. She's going to hit each of them for cold damage. So yeah, let's blow up Hammer and stop the rest of his damage which again immediately buries this. Okay, then Citizen Summer deals the two heroes with most cards in play, three fire damage each. And again, we'll take it on Absolute Zero first. He's down to four, but he deals back four cold damage and he'll finish off Citizen Anvil with that, with his minus one. And then Wraith is also taken three damage, ouch. And then finally, Winter deals each of us two cold damage. But hey, one of us is happy about that. <laughs> All right, and once again, we survived. We're up to Wraith. And I think, um, Let's go with Impromptu Invention. So she draws a card, plays her first item. She got another leverage. Her first item is a Flashbang Projector. Put one non-character villain target in play back on top of the villain deck and then destroy this card. Although I guess I can use an extra power. And then I can play one card, which I think has to be Razor Ordinance. I can deal somebody three projectile damage, get some actual damage going here. And then for her two powers, thanks to the Utility Belt, I think she'll stun Citizen Dawn? She's one we know will be attacking. And then she can do Razor Ordinance against Citizen Summer. She's the nastier one. All right, and she draws a card. Inventory Barrage. She can basically destroy her own item cards to deal a ton of damage. <laughs> uh, maybe we should do that because Citizen Dawn will blow them up anyway. All right, meanwhile, Bunker could deal one target three melee damage. If that damage destroys the target, put this card under an Ordinance card in play. We don't have any. Now we'll go ahead and go into Recharge Mode. So you can't use Powers. You can destroy the card at the start of the turn, but it'll get to draw four additional cards during the draw phase, so five total. And then he can put any number of cards under weapons, but he's not going to do that. He's going to draw five cards. So here we go. Uh, foam Grenade, Power Bank, Flat Cannon, another Piston Punch, and some Shielding. If we have time to play that, that'll be great. And then finally, Absolute Zero. He's going to summon any one item card and then deal himself one fire damage and one cold damage. Actually, wait, no, he's not, because I forgot. Literally, all his items are already in play that he really wants. No, I do want that extra damage. Okay, so let's do this one where I can use an extra power, draw an extra card every, card every turn. But for my power, I'll have him uh, kill off the fire girl, right? He'll deal himself one fire damage to deal her two cold damage, leaving the cold girl around to heal him. And then he gets to draw an extra card from his high yield coolant tanks, and he gets another one. <laughs> We're just sort of hanging on here. It's the best we can do, Megalopolis. Oh no, the paparazzi. After a hero uses a power, they deal themselves one fixed psychic damage. Uh, but at the start of the environment phase, we have to deal with this the entire turn. Each hero may discard one card. If each active hero does so, discard this card or destroy it. Darn it. 
Uh, coming around to Citizen Dawn. She's playing the first ongoing card. Just channel the Eclipse. Of course it is. Then uh, Spring, Summer, and Autumn each destroy one hero ongoing card. Oh, so she doesn't do it if she's by herself. And then play the top card of the villain deck. Another channel the Eclipse. Huh. Yeah, they're not limited. I guess she's really channeling the Eclipse. Uh, so we play the top card of the villain deck again. Citizen Dawn regains 10 hit points. Awesome. Yay. I have accomplished nothing. <laughs> And then she plays her regular card. We can't forget about that. Blinding Blast. Citizen Dawn deals each hero target two energy damage and each of them discards one card. Now, one nice consolation. It is only one damage because she's still stunned. We are seeing a slow death in the Sentinels world here. I'm down to seven. And uh, Sonic Neutralizer go away. At least we have a lot of cards to discard. Down to ten. I don't care about stopping environment cards, I don't think. <laughs> down to four. And yeah, we don't uh, get rid of ongoing cards in this one. Oh, I think Absolute Zero is going to die. Yeah, there's definitely no way he's not. Oh, wait, no, it is Citizen Dawn dealing the damage because of the Eclipse, so we might be okay. All right, so she's going to deal one of us X Radiant damage. Oh, and then she discovers. Again, I feel like I might have messed that up once. So right now it's two Citizens minus one. She's doing one to the highest hit point. Bunker's down to nine. And then she's discovering a Citizen card. Citizen Battery. Uh, if Assault wasn't played, deal more damage. Oh, and he just does a ton of damage too. Okay, uh... Pfft. Yelling each, oh, hero target two cold damage. Yay! <laughs> Absolute Zero is going to definitely be alive. Now, will Wraith be alive? Maybe not. Uh, Bunker's kind of hanging in. Wait, Absolute Zero, heal him to six. Okay, then she's dealing all of us. Would have been two, but it's down to one. So one, two damage each. Race at three people. All right, and then this card deals the hero target with the highest hit points, three energy damage. Oh my gosh, the highest, <laughs> the highest is five. Yeah, we're done, but let's play it out. It's first things first, I'm going to use the other card I've been holding. I can destroy and or bury up to three environment cards. I don't want us all to take damage automatically, so we'll just put that on the bottom. Now, Wraith. Oh, Wraith. I guess you can inventory barrage. Discard name of item cards. Deals one target X damage, where X is the number of cards discarded this way, times two. Flashbang projector I'm not that impressed by. So, uh, but I do want the stun ball and the utility belt. So, what, we're just doing two damage? Is that really all we're doing? Well, that's fine. We can at least try to kill these people, so we'll hit battery with that. And for her two powers, um, I guess she'll do a stun ball to Citizen Dawn again. Lower her damage. Then three more damage to Citizen Battery, maybe, from the Razor Ordinance. Yeah, I don't know here. My uh, regularity of attacking and damaging is not great. All right, Bunker destroys the recharge mode. He can actually play something now. I mean, he needs, like, the flat cannon or the shield. <laughs> I don't know. Sure, we'll get a gun in play that he'll probably never get to use. And then for his power, he will load it up with a bullet. Oh, wait, I forgot. He has a way to stop Citizen Dawn from dealing any damage. We're going to play uh, this. We're going to do Still Life on Citizen Dawn. So she won't be able to deal any damage. And uh, because of that, I'm going to play, say, the Wraith did the one damage Citizen Battery. At least do something here. That gets rid of one of these. Oh, that's right. It gets buried. That's not enough. Okay, then Absolute uh, Zero. Oh, man. Yeah, Bunker's going to die. I mean, here, we'll play. Say he played the shield and then drew a card instead. That's the play that actually makes any sense, right? All right, and then should I heal myself? I guess. Can't kill uh, the other lady, so yeah. Sure, we'll heal him to six. That's right, he can draw an extra card. Great. And we got another power, finally. And uh, installation, I don't think I need any other item cards. Okay. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. No, not... I just put you on the bottom of the deck. Ugh. So, Citizen Dawn does not discover an ongoing card, but she does play a free card from the Eclipse. And it's the other ongoing card. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, then she can't deal any damage because it's still life, but she does still discover a citizen. It's going to be Citizen Assault. We just got rid of Battery, and now he's here. And then, oh my gosh. Uh, she's going to do three damage to everybody. This is going to do uh, Citizen Dawn, so no damage to everybody. And then this is going to do two damage to everybody. So that's five damage to everybody. It's got to be it, right? Yep, Wraith is definitely defeated. So her entire turn will be doing one of these. She can let another hero take a draw. She can summon an item card for a hero, or she can bury a villain target with two or fewer hit points. That one's kind of nice. But all of her stuff is gone, gone, gone. Um, Bunker, I think there's a way for him to survive. Let's see. She did three cold damage first. So if I use this, it's minus two. Uh, then because one damage is still getting dealt, it gets destroyed and he heals himself too. So he's at three. And then Assault deals one damage. Yeah, Bunker, staying alive. Once again, the only one who's doing sort of okay is uh, Absolute Zero. He goes up to nine, then down to seven from the melee damage. All right, now it's Wraith's turn. I think one here summoning one item card is probably the best we can do. Come well, on, Bunker, get something cool. Yeah, his other copy of Grenade Launcher is the way to go, I think. Which means at the start of his turn, he gets to put a card under it. If we're going out, we're going out with a bag, baby, Piston Punch. You're going to punch somebody for three damage, and then if it destroys them, this goes under one of my Ordnance cards. 
And yeah, sadly, you can't destroy anybody, but sure, we'll hit Citizen Winner. And then Grenade Launcher, we can hit two targets, or three targets for two fire damage each. Two on Assault, two on Citizen Dawn, down to 96, so close to winning. And then we'll destroy Winner, and uh, which means we want to get rid of, clearly, Channel the Eclipse, I guess. Although I think those are the only two ongoing cards she has in her deck, so they're always going to come back. Nice job, Bunker. All right, finally, Absolute Seer, who's actually alive. Uh, this gets destroyed, so he gets to draw a card and then play a card, uh, which will be Modular Repair. I don't need to salvage an item card, but to get on myself, damage is good. Yeah, I think I'll play Thermal Shockwave on him just to do something. Then he still gets his regular play. Oh, we'll play this one. I get to draw one card, then collect one item card, and then play a card of my choice. I'll draw... Oh, that's the item I was going to get. Whatever, I'll get another one of these then. And then I can play a card. I'm going to try doing Modular Repair. So I get to pick up an item card, and then I can play one card. I'll get one of those. Play one card. I'm going to play this Cryo Shield Projector. Makes me deal more cold damage to myself and less fire damage. And then I deal myself one fire damage and one cold damage. The fire damage gets reduced to zero because of the Cryo Field Projector. And the cold damage gets increased to... Oh, it's three. That's right, because uh, he also has his other bonus. So he'll to ten. Yay! Okay, now I can use two powers, which will be this one and this one. I guess I'll deal myself uh, three more cold healing. This one says... Absolute Zero deals up to three targets, one cold damage each. Then he deals himself X fire damage, which X is the amount of cold damage dealt by Absolute Zero this turn. Oh my god, wait a second. Uh, how much? Oh god, this is bad. <laughs> well, at least I'll go out with the bag. So up to three targets, one cold damage each. Well, let's do himself for three, I guess. I'll have to calculate how much he did in a second. Then you can do two to Assault to finish him off and get this buried. And two to Citizen Dawn. So that right there was two, four, seven cold. Plus, this one was another three, so that was 10 cold damage. And then I healed myself here for three more, so that's 13 cold damage. So I deal myself, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I deal myself that much fire damage, but minus one because of this card, so 12 fire damage. So I'm down to four life. All the healing was for naught, but I am dealing her 13 cold damage. In a regular world, that would have been cool. Oh no, I forgot about the paparazzi. <laughs> So when Bunker shot his grenade launcher, he actually killed himself. The paparazzi literally uh, defeated him. Darn it. And that means Absolute Zero is down to three. So that'll be the end of that, I think. But first, let's see. Each hero may discard one card. Sure, we can do that. I'll have Absolute Zero get rid of one of the extra items. He's the only hero alive, so that's all we need. And then a new one, Bank Heist. Really? You want us to worry about a Bank Heist right now? <laughs> On each hero's start phase, that hero may skip their draw phase. After a hero does so, destroy this card. Oh, we may skip two of their draw phase. We skip their entire turn. In start phase, each hero discards one card, play the top card of the villain deck, and destroy this card. Oh, wow. But not that it matters, right? We're going to discover one ongoing card. Okay, there's another one of those. Uh, oh, look, there is another one. Return with the Dawn. Play the H-2 citizen cards with the lowest hit points from the villain trash. I feel like this is one I would have wanted to keep in play, but I got to not kill them. So, all right, what is it? The lowest hit points. Isn't there some guy with three life in here? Yeah, that's right. Citizen Dare. Plus one damage dealt to hero targets. Lovely. And she's going to punch me for three damage, and that is all she wrote. Ouch, I got destroyed. <laughs> now, to be fair, Citizen Dawn is already slightly on the harder side of villains, but yeah, these endless ongoing cards. What a challenge this critical event is. These things are no joke. And look, ha ha ha, we could have played advanced mode. After a villain ongoing card is played, Citizen Dawn deals each non-villain target two more damage. That would have been like every turn, right? Wow. I mean, unless I just like never killed her citizens, but that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like maybe that's the strategy to get some people who can just go to the face super hard and hit her over and over until her hundred life is dead. But then she could just Aurora away all of your upgrades. I don't know. This is a tough, tough, tough one. Well, let's talk about my thoughts. So first, the new art and graphic design. I love it. I'm all for it. I think the components are better. I love these spinners. Makes uh, tracking the toughest hit points much easier. As for the core gameplay, it's basically unchanged. The one key thing is they did make uh, the keywords better, like you saw Discover and Summon and Salvage. They have all those on the back of the rule book, and they definitely clean up some of the card text. You don't have to say as much because uh, you just condense it all into a single keyword. I think that was a great choice. As for the deck design, which is kind of the biggest thing, right? Redesigning some of these characters. I think they did a pretty great job with the heroes. Heroes that used to be a little bit boring, used to have like almost no choices, are now much more interesting. I'm not sure if you saw that in this playthrough, but you got like hints of how explosive Bunker could have been, for example, if he had, uh, you know, not had all of his weapons destroyed the second that he got good. So really nice job with the heroes. I think they did a great job with that. Same thing with the environments. I found them more interesting. Even uh, one of the six in the base game, Atlantis, which was kind of a frustrating one, was pretty fun in this new version. And then mostly they improved the villains. Now, it's funny. <laughs> My least favorite thing about villains 
was when they had an all clear because I like powering up in the game and this just kind of reduces that to nothing. And Citizen Dawn is like one of the only ones in the core set that kept this as is. Whereas uh, like, for example, Omnitron used to destroy all your stuff. Now it's a bit more of a choice. He doesn't like destroy everything. So yeah, so mostly the villains are better, but Citizen Dawn is one where uh, I feel like they kept her just as frustrating. And yes, that is a core part of her design that she just messes up your build entirely. But <laughs> it didn't mean that this was necessarily the most fun I've had in a play of Sentinels. But yes, again, most of the villains are better and more interesting. Um, although there are still frustrations. But the big thing people might be wondering is, is this a simpler, more streamlined version of Sentinels? And except for that keyword fix, no, I would say absolutely not. If you played Sentinels once and you didn't like uh, keeping track of like bonuses and minuses, didn't like resolving like four or five ongoing cards once uh, people get a lot of cards in play, didn't like just tracking a lot of effects in general, they didn't seem to make that a design goal. And I'm okay with that. Like I'm somebody who is more used to running stuff in Sentinels, although I still missed a bunch of stuff in this playthrough. But yeah, if that kind of scared you away from Sentinels, it is the exact same. I don't know if they said they were trying to streamline, maybe they never said that, but they certainly did not from my perspective. Things are just as complex and just as sometimes challenging to run as always. Although that is the charm of the game. That's what makes these heroes feel so incredibly different and those villains feel so incredibly different. So I'm, again, okay with it, but I do want you to understand if you were avoiding Sentinels, I'm not saying this is the one to go in with. But here's the thing, if you never played Sentinels and if you want a version that is better designed, has better uh, components in it, because as you saw, they have a ton of stuff in this core set, way more than the original core set. They've got an alternate hero version of every hero. They've got two entire scenarios, including an entirely alternate version of each villain for the six villains. They've got six environments. I think it was only four uh, villains, four environments in the original core set. Uh, heroes might've only been six or eight. So yeah, there's a ton of content in here, great components. Uh, great new art, at least in my opinion, kind of calling to uh, mind Silver Age of comic books and stuff. I think this is definitely by far the best buy-in that Sentinels has ever had, the best version to look at that Sentinels has ever had. But like I said, go in with your eyes open because this is not like my baby's first Sentinels. This is pretty much just as complex as it always was, just with better balancing for most of the characters, except for Citizen Dawn. I still hate her. Might never play her again, <laughs> but every other villain in the core set now, five out of six, is uh, interesting and consistently engaging. Uh, she's the only one I don't like personally. But yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the uh, playthrough. That's Sentinels of the Multiverse Definitive Edition. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.